Song of Solomon 6, 3. I am my beloved's, and my beloved is mine. And he feeds his flock among the lilies. Jesus is the beloved of the word of God. We see in the New Testament when Jesus is baptized, the father affirms him and says, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And in Song of Solomon, King Solomon, uh, or Song of Songs, um, Solomon, King Solomon is a picture of Jesus, the king. And the Shulamite woman who is having dialogue with King Solomon is a picture of the body of Christ, the church, those who will believe in Jesus as Lord, as the bridegroom, as the savior. And the definition for beloved is dearly loved, darling, dearest, precious, adored, much loved, cherished, treasured, prized, highly regarded, admired, esteemed, worshipped, revered, a much loved person, sweetheart. Jesus is the darling of heaven. He is the sweetheart of heaven. Jesus is the one who looked at the Shulamite woman, the the people who were murdering and killing and hating and dividing and ripping things apart and being selfish and greedy and self-motivated. He looked at people doing things they were never designed to do, walking in darkness. We were never designed to walk in darkness. We were created in the light, by the light, for the light. We were created for light. But we have become dark. Just like the Shulamite woman who was not designed to be working out in the field in the sun. But given circumstance, she's been working in the field. So she is dark. Her skin is, is worn by the sun. She's dark. But in Song of Solomon, Song of Songs 1 5, she says, I am dark, but lovely. I am dark, but I am lovely. And in chapter four of that book, we see King Solomon say, yeah, you're all together lovely. And he just, the whole thing is just a description of his love for her. And then he begins to say, come away, come into the garden, come have everything that's mine. And you're thinking, what on earth? You got a king who has everything he could ever want, everything he could ever need. He has all respect, all honor. He has all authority, all power. He's the king. Looking at this woman who's working in a field, you could get another woman. King Solo, okay, you could get you another boo because she's been out in the field. Her hands are callous. She's been working the vineyard. She's been doing something she wasn't designed to do. And because of that, she's not pretty enough. Her hands aren't soft enough. Her skin's not light enough, not white enough. It's been worn by the sun. She's she's too tan. You can tell she's been working in the field. No, you need to get you another woman. And King Solomon's like, no, man, you don't get it. I think she's beautiful. She's altogether lovely. I want her to come away with me 
Come into my garden. Everything I have here is yours. And this reminds me of Jesus. And the Shulamite woman says of King Solomon, I am my beloved's and he is mine. And as a picture of us, the Shulamite woman is a picture of you. She's a picture of me. And King Solomon is a picture of the King Jesus. And if we look at it like that, then we understand, yeah, we are darkened by this world's trauma. We are darkened by circumstance. Some have been abused and it has darkened you. You've been beaten. You've been molested. You've been taken advantage of. You've been verbally ripped apart. So you've been darkened by life. Maybe your soul becomes dark and, and, and now you begin to, to look a certain way and act a certain way and do things a certain way. But when you find out that the king is in love with you, you can either say, ah, oh, whatever. That's a bunch of foolishness. And trample all over the idea. Or you can be like this woman and say, yeah. And because he loves me, I'm dark, but I'm lovely. Because the darling of heaven, the precious one of heaven, the esteemed and the worshipped and the admired and the highly regarded one of heaven has called me altogether lovely. Ain't nobody going to go back and take uh, the king's power from him. You're not going to go change a king's thoughts on something. You're not going to change his decree. He's the king. What he calls lovely is lovely. And for, for me, this book is, as Catherine Kuhlman would say, marvelous. It's wonderful because this book is, is about me and Jesus Christ. And some may be offended by that because they maybe have not have had their eyes open to the fact that the book is also about them and Jesus Christ. Why would the Father send his beloved Son, his only begotten son John 3 16 says to be brutally gruesomely murdered if not for us he sent his son it says for God so loved the world he gave his only begotten son so that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So you mean to tell me that God sent his beloved, his only begotten son for me, for the whoever that might believe I am whoever he sent him for whoever might believe. And would he let him die that kind of death so that me and his son could just be like some distant, unknown, unconnected, disconnected thing? I'd say not. He sent his son to die such a gruesome death, such an extreme death, so that we could be extremely close to him. 1 John 3, 1, what manner of love the Father has poured out on us. One translation says, lavished. He's lavished his love on us that we may be called his children. Maybe if Jesus sprinkled one drop of blood, then we could just be called his acquaintances, his servants or his slaves. But because he lavished his love and he 
poured his blood out at the cross, we can be God's children. Then you read through the New Testament and you read through the Gospels and you clearly see the picture of Jesus as the bridegroom and as the church, as the bride. So he died an extreme death to do an extreme thing, like make a Shulamite woman working in the vineyard, the lover of King Solomon. Like to make a bunch of people who do things they weren't designed to do, like sin and murder and hate and, and be selfish and self-loving and abuse and manipulate and rip things apart to take those people and make Jesus the lover of their souls and put them in a place where they can say like this woman, I am my beloved's. I am, I belong to Jesus and Jesus belongs to me and I will go into his garden. I will go into his kingdom and all that is his is mine because of the choice of the most loving father any of us will ever encounter our father God. This story is not easy to express because it's too wonderful for me. Like David said, You're, this is too wonderful. This is too wonderful. I can't even get my mind around the truth of this. But every book of the Bible points to Jesus Christ. So I know that the Song of Songs points to Jesus Christ. And this book is about an intimate love relationship. And so... I can see in the beloved. I can see in the darling of heaven. I can see in the dearest one, in the most precious one, in the highly regarded and admired, worshipped king. I can see my beloved, my bridegroom, the one the Bible promises is coming back for me and for all who would simply believe. Believe in Jesus Christ as God's only son sent by the father to die for us. Why? Because he loves us. What does love do? It gives and true love gives until it hurts uh, uh, extremely. It gives until it is uh, indescribably painful. That's what love does. It gives and it gives and it gives and it gives. Well, what about if somebody starts taking from and manipulating and abusing and you give and you give and you give and you forgive and you forgive and you give. And so this is what the father has done for us. He gave. He gave something far too precious to have relationship with me. He gave something far too precious to be married to you. But he did it because that's what love does. And that's who God is. First John tells us God is love. So God gives and he gives until it is indescribably painful. Like giving the darling of heaven to earth so that they may slaughter him. Like a heifer in the Old Testament, a goat 
that they may deal with my son the way they dealt with animals. Because I love until it is excruciating and it is painful because I am God and I am love. And so I give and I give and I give and I forgive. And because that is true about God, that's who he is. I can believe that he would send his only begotten, his beloved son for the Shulamite woman for the people that have been working in a vineyard they should have never worked in for a people that are can be encompassed in Adam and Eve who ate a fruit who ate from a tree they should have never eaten from And so they had sin and they had bondage and they had iniquity and they had shame. They should have never had to deal with and it darkened them. But the great story of redemption is that they can say, I am dark. I am dark like my great, 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 I am dark like my great, 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 grandma Eve. I'm dark because we made a choice to believe lies and we gave in to the devil and we gave in to lust and we gave in to temptation. I am dark because I'm wrong. I turned my back on God in the garden. I believed Satan over God. I'm wrong for that. And I have become dark because of it but i am lovely because he loves me that's the beauty of the gospel and that is why i believe it that's why i live my life for it because that looks like love because love true agape love is not fickle love like human love where you just love when you're getting gifts And you love when you got butterflies in your stomach. But then once you don't feel it no more, you dip out. That's what we've seen in our world in circles and cycles forever. But the love of God is so far beyond that. The love of God is the kind of love that says, I will send my only son to you to be slaughtered in hopes that you will receive him. Not even knowing that you will. In hopes that you will call on his name and repent of your sins and be freed by him and delivered by him and loved by him. Giving his son for the one. Giving his son for the people from generation to generation to generation who turned their back on him. That is love. 1 Corinthians 13, 8 tells us love never gives up. Another translation says love conquers all. Another translation says love never fails. And this is why God never fails. No matter how many times people fail him, there is no such thing as the failing God. He, ha- he, he doesn't have it in him because he is love and love never fails. And so even when we are unfaithful, God remains faithful to who he is. He is perfect love. And so whether we go left or whether we go right, God stays the same. And the greatest love of all is that the creator of the universe, the father God, would send his son, his beloved, to become ours. He would send his beloved so that I could say about him. He is my 
beloved. I am my beloved's and he is mine. That I could say that about his son? This is wonderful. This is what? Good news. What does gospel mean? Good news. This is such good news. That dark, sinful, lost people who are doing things they were never designed to do by God and saying things they were never designed to say and becoming things they were never designed to become and becoming dark in that can still be lovely because the king loves them. You are lovely if King Jesus calls you lovely. Ain't nobody taking what Jesus says and turning it around. If he calls you lovely, you're lovely. And I, Jade, am dark. Because I've come up in this world just like you. And I've been through things in this world just like you. And I've seen enough to be on the edge of hate just like you. And I've witnessed enough just like you. And I've been made dark by the world, but I am lovely because he loved me. And in his love, I become altogether beautiful. And I can cast off all old things. And I can conquer the world. And I can overcome the world because I am now in him. I am in my beloved. And I am as beautiful as the one that I am inside of. So the dark part of me dies and I live in Jesus Christ like Paul, Galatians 2.20. It's no longer I who lives. The dark in me is dead. But Christ, because I've been crucified, I've died. And now I live, uh, Christ is living on the inside of me now. So it's not Paul. And all the darkness has died. That's the beauty of the gospel is that I could step into Christ and become one with him because he is my beloved and my darkness dies. And my beauty lives because I live in the beautiful one. What's so incredible about this is that it is truly for the murderer It is for the abuser and it is for the abused. It is for the dead and their souls. It is for the uh, drug addict. It is for the prostitute. It is for the lying, stealing preacher. It is for the liar. The thief. This is is for everyone who would believe. You mean to tell me that somebody could murder somebody and then think they can call Jesus their beloved? Yes, that is the glory of the cross. It has no limits. It has no bounds. You can't put a boundary on the cross of Jesus Christ. You think you could put a Uh, A borderline on the blood of Jesus? So you mean to tell me that some man that abused his kids could repent from that and say he's sorry to God and, and, and then end up calling Jesus his beloved? Absolutely. Absolutely. The moment you put a limit on the blood of Jesus Christ is the moment you have lost sight of the blood of Jesus Christ. This blood of the beloved is without limits and it is for all and anyone who would believe in him turn from their old ways. I have good news for you. Your darkness has died and your beauty lives as you live in Jesus Christ.